So, hello everyone. This is a video meant to explain the iNinja debug mode, how to obtain it, and how to make the most out of it. First of all, for those who don't know, debug mode is basically a mode set in every in any video game in which you will get a closer look at how the game was developed, meaning that you can access the level through certain parts. You can have a debug mode within your file, which will let you unlock any mission at your leisure and many other advantages which will make speedrun practice that much easier for you. So first of all, within your iNinja file, you'll find that there is a folder called data. The general .bol file is where debug mode is, let's say, decided. There's a value which says debug mode equals zero which you'll have to change using Notepad++ or any other similar applications to one. If you don't trust yourself doing this, and I don't trust myself with it, uh, within our Discord for iNinja speedrunning, which I'll leave a link to in the description, there's a file ready to go which you'll only have to download and replace within this folder. But do not forget to actually back up your general.bol without debug mode because you'll need it to do speedruns. You cannot have debug mode on under any circumstances for a 9 inch speedrun. So, when... give me a second... when you open 9 inch itself it's gonna look something like this. Notice how it's mostly the same the only thing that's changed really is the level select. So let's hop in and let's see what it gets. So, five overworlds are here. The ones that we know and love. Robot Beach, Bombay, Jungle Falls, Mountain Gorge and Moon Base. And mini games being the, ga the missions that you unlock after beating the world's boss, which you require to pay coinage for. So, when you enter the sub menu, you'll see a lot of options. You'll also notice that none of the missions really have the actual name. For example, Eyeball 1 mission is I Ninja, whereas Eyeball 2 is I 2 I, and Robot Sneak Base is Heart Attack. This happens throughout the entire debug menu, but it's really not difficult to figure out which mission has its name because of it. Now, as far as these save states go, let's call them save states, there are different loading zones within the same mission. For example, I Ninja has four loading zones, I2I has three, Robot Sneak Base meaning Heart Attack has uh, six. There's also bosses and cutscenes, which I think are redundant, but in case you want to see them, they're here for you. If you want to practice a mission which is find the red coinage, hunt the enemies, or even beat the clock, it's going to be quite complicated on a save file that you've made that you've already 100% it. Or unless you make the objective arbitrary within yourself and kind of like imaginarily keep count of the ranks or find the coins that you know where they are but they're not really in the game. So you can actually practice these missions with debug mode, which is pretty simple. Every overworld will have the hub. Bomb Island hub, forest hub, mountain hub. Okay, you get the idea. So what you're going to want to do is, let's say I want to practice heart attack rats. I'm going to hop in the robot hub. And you'll see these green little boxes called fax setters. Every world in debug mode has this. For every mission, there's one which will account a certain level as finished. There's one that will give you the belts required to play the maximum requirement belt mission, to put it that way. And there's also ways to unlock the bosses and get enough coins to play the minigames. So, going back to Heart Attack Reds, it's really pretty simple. I'm gonna grab the green belt flag setter, and as you see, I'm very green now. We're gonna make it to heart attack. And in here it is 
simply be very explanatory. If I grab the mission complete, it means that I passed the normal mission. If I pass the replay one, that means I don't have to beat the clock. And when I enter the mission... There you go, find the red coinage. No deal. Now, you can do this for basically any mission on any hub. Uh, keep in mind that Mountain Gorge has a black belt flag setter, which I find useful to make like the combat a bit more faster to practice strats or whatever. You can even open the battle arena, you can practice the mini games, and so on and so on and so forth. Now, you may notice that some of these safe states when you enter them. Well, first of all, some of those are, some some of these are broken. <laughs> uh, do not feel weird if you open a save state and it's pitch black and you're just dying over and over again. That's normal. And secondly, is that some of these actually make way for the strats that you're gonna want to practice in a run. For example, the very first save state is just a bit, it's just before one of the first strats implemented into a run, being the ramp skip that people usually do in any percent. So I can just hop in and I'm already here and completing this and I can go as far as hardly as I want. So yeah, I'm gonna practice this. Yeah, we're gonna get here. We skip the ramp. I practice a strat. And bam. You can restart the level as many times as you want and it'll load you in the save, save state. It's not like it's gonna throw you back to the very beginning. So you can practice it as many times as you want or as little. Which I find very, very useful. Some other save states which I recommend using is the very beginning of 502 to make the ramp skip again. Uh, another one that's very good is Ride the Locks 1.6 which of course serves to practice the Ride the Locks chain clip which I actually encourage you to learn because it saves easily 45 seconds oops which saves 45 seconds per play of the game wait is this still recording? I'm sorry okay it is so you can just go here bam easy And really, that's about it, aside from one little thing, which if you're a glitch hunter, it's going to be quite useful for you, which is basically the usage of, of a free camera. So, for example, let's hop into Mountain Gorge, which actually has a skip we know of. So once you enter any desired mission, you're gonna want to press whatever button you have binded to tutorial. Mine is select, which I find the most intuitive. And as you can see, the whole game will freeze, and I'll be able to move it. Chain, uh, the chain button will make you move up, the first person button will make you move down. And this is how we can see, for example, the area in which you clip out of bounds during Sneak and Destroy, and you can see that the entire map is kind of built with like overcompensation in territory, which means that most of it is clippable, we just have to know if it's possible or not. And other than that, that's pretty much it really. I hope you find this tool very useful because it certainly has helped me to practice some certain strats and of course the red coinage missions, which is very easy to forget when, where they are specifically. If you have any questions, absolutely let me know, it is not a disturbance at all. And if you want to join our Discord to discuss speedrunning iNinja, make memes, or even participate in the fun project for a sequel, be sure to check out the description where I'll leave a link for you to do it. I hope you have a good night and stay safe.